Israel is not only escalating and threatening those who fight back, they are also threatening and escalating against those who don't fight back. So, we have another escalation between Israel and the Palestinian Authority. The Palestinian Authority is using the momentum that's happening globally when it comes to the international courts. And there were reports that in the next UN General Assembly, they will be taking further actions against Israel. Now, mind you, the Palestinian Authority only take diplomatic actions and the Palestinian president always said that we don't choose the path of violent resistance. We only choose the path of peaceful resistance. However, now we have updates, of course, from The Hague and from the international courts. And now they're saying that Israel has no right to be in the West Bank. They need to dismantle the settlements as soon as possible, including East Jerusalem. The Palestinian Authority is looking to capitalize on that, but the Israelis are not happy. Although it's just diplomatic action, it's not like the Palestinian Authority is going to fight Israel or anything. No, they're just taking action, diplomatic action and legal action. But Israel doesn't want that. They are threatening to dismantle the Palestinian Authority. The Israeli Foreign Minister Israel Katz said if the Palestinian Authority breaks the tools in the next UN General Assembly, we will dismantle the Palestinian Authority. We will dismantle them. So imagine the level that they're reaching. They don't want to deal with those who are fighting them. They don't want to deal with those who talk with them. They don't want to deal with anyone. They just want to have their way. And they will do everything in their capability to achieve that way. And it's mostly through violence, terror, genocide, and ethnic cleansing, which is what they're planning for the West Bank. We've had this attack from a Jordanian man who killed three security officers on the Alembi crossing between Jordan and the West Bank. Technically, that's the West Bank, but Israel has presence there. This is how Israel operates. The crossing between Jordan and uh, the West Bank, that should be held by Palestinians. But Israel, because it wants to control everything, they're present there. So this man, of course, is representing a lot of frustration coming from the Jordanian people against the uh, government's continued supply of goods to Israel. And of course, uh, the government not taking enough action against Israel. And this man uh, carried out this attack and Israel closed the borders with Jordan. This is not the first attack that's coming from Jordan. We've had two attacks previously where Israelis were targeted and they believe that the infiltration came from Jordan, although Jordan has a very robust and very high level security arrangements when it comes to the borders with Israel. However, that is showing that we are looking towards an escalation across the Jordan borders as well. Israel always thought of the Jordan borders, the Jordanian borders as safe borders in general, especially because there's a lot of Israeli presence, of course, and the Jordanian government, they take a lot of security measures on their side too. But it's showing that nowhere is safe and Israel's recklessness in the West Bank is going with the steps of Gaza, in the steps of Gaza, the Gaza genocide and what they're committing in Gaza now with the destruction in the West Bank. It's only a matter of a political decision when to escalate further and start landing thousands of tons of bombs on top of the heads of the innocent civilian in the West Bank. That's it. And that decision can be made at an instance in Israel. We're talking about a genocidal government, a genocidal by intent and genocidal by words and by actions. The countries are feeling what's happening and we've been talking about the latest uh, ties and Turkey and Egypt and Syria coming together. They are having reconciliations. They're trying to solve the problems in Syria and Erdogan had a speech today in which he said that uh, the only solution to stop the Israeli bullying is to have a united Islamic front. He said that Israel is committing a genocide in Gaza. They're going towards the West Bank. They're threatening Lebanon, they're threatening Syria, and they're threatening everyone between the Nile to the Euphrates. In reference to the greater Israel that many Israelis want to implement and want to see, including people in the government. 
And to Erdogan, he said that only Muslim unity would be able to deter them and take decisive actions against them. Now, the Turkish president, he always faces criticism from Israel. And the Israeli government, and again, the Israeli foreign minister, they criticize him harshly when it comes to the statements that he makes against Israel because they know how effective they are, especially coming from him being the uh, Turkish president who has a lot of influence in the Muslim world. So the Turkish president is having these uh, coordinations with Egypt and with Syria and with the other countries too, but now he's calling to take the next step, simultaneously doing what? Simultaneously saying that Hamas is fighting on behalf of the Muslim world. Rajab Tayyip Erdogan is viewing Hamas as a front to what he says should be implemented. Now we know they haven't taken military action against Israel so far, Turkey, but the fact that they are saying that Hamas is leading the front of the whole Muslim world is very significant. You're talking about a NATO member, you're talking about a very powerful country, you're talking about a country with military presence in many parts of the world, especially in Africa and the Middle East, and now he's calling for this uh, Muslim unity. Now, how effective that call would be, I'm not entirely sure, because in many of the Muslim countries, you're not talking about uh, governments that represent the will of the people, of course, and many people are asking their governments to do more when it comes to Israel. However, the more time goes by, the more Israel continues to commit these genocides, the more they turn people against them, and the more they push towards potential action being taken against them, including from countries that they did not expect to have any sort of repercussions from.